John Parker Romo will kick it off for Virginia Tech. Wanye Thomas, Tobias Oliver back to receive for the Yellow Jackets. And this game will begin first and ten. Linebackers had a heavy duty a year ago against Georgia Tech. And it's early, but the hamstring for Ashby looks all right. First throw for Graham near the sideline and ruled complete at the 30. We're back out of the pocket, get away from the rush. This is something Graham does extremely well, throwing the ball on the move. Let's check the toes. Does he get the toe tap? It's as close as it gets. Ooh, that is very close. Moving into the starting lineup and Jalen Camp got hurt. Graham keeps it. And he's not going to get to the marker. Met by Jamari Connor with a boom. Virginia Tech sorting that out and limiting his opportunity to get the first down. Presley Harvin kicks it away. And fair catch called for by Tavion Robinson. Tight end Mitchell in motion. And McLeese met in the backfield. Tremendous penetration there from the Georgia Tech line. Ryans comes in, picked up eight on first down, lost two on second down. Hooker sets up the screen. Deshaun McLeese tackled a couple yards short on third down the last two weeks. Oscar Bradburn's having an amazing season. The Aussie is the ACC specialist of the week last week, but here's Amari and Brown. He's a pretty special true freshman receiver. Foster overall in his 33rd year at Virginia Tech. He's got a few regular season games left, and then who knows, maybe an ACC title game. As Graham flips it, it's incomplete. For Thomas to make, or for Graham to make a throw, just did not recognize the coverage. Had man coverage and a shallow drag was wide open. Tremendous hang time on that kick. But here comes the electric Tavion Robinson. And he will trip up. Second team all ACC was Hazleton a year ago. The reverse. This is Robinson, and he's got a lot of green in front of him. Tavion Robinson inside Georgia Tech territory, out of bounds around the 22. Make the reverse on the screen on third down the last play. Now they come back with the reverse. Hinden Hooker out trying to get a block. Been here a lot defensively, but teams are only converting 53% of the time touchdowns. Hooker zips it to the perimeter. This is Turner. Second and goal. Hooker up the middle. Touchdown. The signal from the line judge and Virginia Tech strikes first. By the back, you see McLeese is going to lead him up in the hole. And then Hooker is able to power in. When you get the, the quarterbacks play in consecutive weeks, where it was a couple of weeks ago where Hinton Hooker was unable to play, uh, he's played, played last week, played well, so you've got a little bit more continuity at the quarterback position. And he was shaken up not long ago. But Wanye Thomas back out there to return the kickoff. Looking for its first first down offensively. Well, tremendous athlete and really not wearing very well blocked by Georgia Tech. Third down and short. Graham throws and it's dropped. Incomplete. One on the young receiver in Kalani Norris. Youngster out of front out of Miami. You got to come back to the football. Clear catch signaled for and made by Tavion Robinson. Hooker claps his hands, looks to throw. Deep down the sideline, Trey Turner makes the catch over the shoulder right in front of the Georgia Tech bench. Pass complete to number 11, Trey Turner. Pressure, Trey Swilling one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, and this is just a fade route, goal route down the sideline. How good is that throw by Hinden Hooker? Drops it right down the chimney chute First to Trey Turner. Turner fakes the handoff, and that's good penetration, and Hooker goes down. Dropped in the backfield there by the Belgian freshman, Sylvain young Juin from the Georgia Tech 34. Patterson keeps it up the middle. He's got the first down and more. On a third and eight, he runs for 19. One thing this kid can do is Patterson is six foot four, 245 pounds. Get out of my he, way. He can do this. In yard run for Patterson and now Hooker. Back in there, fakes the handoff to Turner. Pressure coming, he gets the screen off and look at this. 
Georgia Tech prevents him from scoring, but it's first and goal from the two. Walton, the corner. When, I, when he caught this, Evan, I stuck my hands in here. It's a touchdown. They caught him in a pressure look. King's got all the blockers out in front. And you look up and say, wait a minute. Hey, hey Damon, Hazelton, yeah. get a block for me, will you? But what a play by the freshman corner. Similar spot to where Hooker run it in. This time it is Keyshawn King rumbling into the end zone. Touchdown, Virginia Tech. Uh, give King the payoff. Excellent call on the screen play to catch Georgia Tech in a pressure. Give him an opportunity to go ahead and shove it in the end zone. Just power play straight up the middle. Very similar to the quarterback run, only this time it's King carrying the football and really goes in pretty much untouched. They kind of really showed, hey, this guy's got some skills now. It's hard to impress former quarterback Dave Archer, but he was watching film, and you, you said last year watching him warm up, you were impressed with the arm. Meanwhile, this Hokies defense is pretty impressive, too. Long again. Yeah, this is just the sweet play, kind of a zone read type play. Graham could have kept that football. Third and 15. Fourth drive of the game for Georgia Tech. And the fourth straight three and out, complete to Davis, but it's five yards short. 44 seconds remaining in the opening quarter. Hooker back to the air. This one's complete. First down and more. It's James Mitchell spun down at the 47. It's amazing what the Hokies have done, considering their struggles in August and September, the way they've played in October and now in November. 14-0, they start the second quarter with a big play. Trey Turner down the sideline. He'll nearly... Virginia Tech is the run. The wide receivers carry the ball almost as much as the backs do. Turner, this is his 15th carry on the year, so he's not a stranger to the jet sweep. Just a nice job of creating a crease for him on the outside. You see Darius Shaw, 77, get out in front. Also, Austin Cannon out there blocking to give Turner the crease to the edge. Caleb Oliver saved the touchdown. Here's McLeese up the middle. And Trey Turner had the 57-yard carry last week against Wake. That was Virginia Tech's longest rush of the year. Hooker at a Dudley High School in Greensboro. Zings it outside of the tight end Keen, and he's very close, but perhaps a half yard shy of the line to gain. Fourth and one. Hooker, first down, touchdown. Touchdown, Virginia Tech. They're making it look pretty easy. Flash to the back out to the flat, which widens one defender. He has to go with him. Marion Brown in motion. It's outside for Oliver. We were talking with Dave Patno, the offensive coordinator, and nowhere to go there. So watch Chamari Connor, number nine. He's actually blocked, maybe even held by the tight end, Tyler Davis. And here's another third down try for Graham. Under pressure, but he runs away from the Hokies, and he's got the first down. And that's Georgia Tech's first first down of the day. 105 tackles last year. He's closing in on 100 tackles this year. And in the wild jacket formation, that did not go well from the start. Snap through Jordan Mason's legs. Quick penetration from Divine Diablo. Nine-yard run on first down. Got a negative play on the second down, and then you snap the ball through the legs. Hooker keeps it, throws it. James Mitchell has a lot of room to run. Across midfield and into Jackets territory for the sophomore tight end. James Mitchell. Two-way go here. They got a bootleg play on. And David Curry, number 90, gets caught back to the inside. Not sure he had him. The Jackets need to step up and make one of these plays if this is going to be a competitive last two and a half quarters. There's a good play. Well timed on the coverage by Miles Sims. He got there exactly at the right spot to prevent Caleb Smith from making the catch. Come in and rake out with rake that ball out with the right arm, right hand. Marion Brown standing at his 10, awaiting the punt from Bradburn. And that's Hokie special teams for you right there. The workman mentality every day like I have never seen before. Oh yeah. Graham throwing from his end zone. It's intercepted. Caleb Farley thinking six. Touchdown for that Bud Foster defense. And it's Farley with a pick six, 17-yard return. Young corner that started with his, from his very first game against Virginia Tech, or against uh, 
Florida State as a freshman. This is his sixth career interception, his fourth this year. He's an amazing defensive coordinator, one of the best that's ever done. Graham loses the football. Virginia Tech had a chance to pick it up. Deshaun Crawford forced it loose. Juan Garba is the defensive end now. The ball gets scraped out. Got to take care of the ball in traffic. If you're Graham, that's another thing you got to learn. But right there, garba has got to scoop and score. And you talk about taking some grief from the film session on Monday. <laughs> He's gonna get, yeah, he, he got stripped out of the... Now it's third and 29. Jemias Griffin takes the handoff. And not a bad run, but that was not 29. Jemias Griffin carries the football. About Jalen, the redshirt sophomore. There's a fourth Griffin brother, Jacoby, who's playing junior college baseball. And then there's one Griffin sister. She's in eighth grade, and apparently she's a, a rising star on the basketball court. And then Virginia Tech played in the first quarter and has run away with this thing early. And this is James Mitchell again down the sideline. And he'll take it inside the 10 for the Hokies. Worn out on this three-count screen. See, 1,000, 1,000, 2,003 release out in front, the offensive line. This time it's the tight end. They screen to the backs. On third and goal. Looking to throw it back toward Hooker, and it is almost intercepted. Tariq Carpenter read it and broke it up. It's amazing. Quarterbacks make throwing the football look so easy when you see someone else do it. Well, we've all thrown bad interceptions, but you'd rather have your quarterback doing it than your wide receiver. Third and nine with 39 seconds to go in the half. Jemias Griffin, the freshman from Rome. You don't want to think like this, but they've been carving up your defense anyway. Not that play, though. How about David Curry laying the lick? They've got to do what we've done all season, keep getting better, continue to compete, put the ball down, and play at a high level, and play for, one each, uh, for each other and together. Back-to-back -back plays for Dominic. He's in on the, front, the first run play, and here he's going to get credit for part of the sack. And back-to-back -back plays, Georgia Tech's done that. On third and 21. Virginia Tech is going to have to punt the Hokies for them to be able to do anything schematically. Dylan Devaney, the tight end, across the middle, brought down by Hollyfield. Ashby delivered the lick on Graham. First and ten. Graham hit as he throws. Ball up in the air like a fair catch. Hollyfield intercepts it. And the Hokies take over on another grand pick. Originally, see the pass rush coming off the left side. Looked like there might have been a hold there, but he fought through that. Manuel Belmar yeah. brought the pressure in his first sack of the season last week against Wake. Boy, this is a crushing blow. Does not allow the arm to come through. Virginia Tech back in the CPI security red zone for the fifth time today. On third and short, McLeese up the middle. We'll set up a first and goal from the seven. See if Curry can make a play. That throw to a wide open man. It's James Mitchell for the touchdown. Well, let's take a look here in coverage, and it looked like maybe Tariq Carpenter got a little bit lost in coverage. Or, uh, maybe a nice stretch run here with a couple of games left. You mentioned Pitt in Virginia coming up. It is he throws, and Graham fires incomplete on third down. Graham in that shotgun situation where he's dropping the throw every down. Returnable. Here comes Robinson. Makes a man miss, trying to cross the field, and he ran a long way, but did not gain very much. Rob Fuente joked that he owns the only hokey flag in Pawhuska, small town Oklahoma. <laughs> he says he lives and dies with every Hokies game, still married to uh, Justin's grandmother, who's 92. To improve his game. Obviously scored the game-winning two-point try in overtime number six. Story of Tech offense, then led by Paul Johnson. Now Dave Patno, the OC for Jeff Collins. Yates steps up, pulls it down, and meets college contact in the form of three Hokie defenders. 
he wasn't the only one. He'll get credit for the loss and the interceptions, but he wasn't the only one that struggled offensively. Patterson took a look, but he had given the ball away to the King. Patterson to throw. Wide open down the sideline, complete. Keyshawn King. And he'll go inside the 15-yard line for another chunk play for the Hokies offense. In coverage, it's a, a little wheel route down the sideline, and he just gets lost. It looks like Dominic might have been in coverage with the defensive end. Couple fourth downs. The Irish converted on that last game-winning drive, too. Patterson floats it to the end zone looking for Smith. And a flag is out. It looks like offensive pass interference to me. They're going to call a hold on Georgia Tech, but and there shouldn't be any call on that. Up the middle and into the end zone goes Quincy Patterson. He's a bulldozer of a quarterback. Something that Justin Fuentes' offense has always had is that quarterback power coming downhill with a big quarterback. And, and the narrative is going to be after a magical, you know, perfect script last weekend. And with the defense, who knows, 15 minutes away from a shutout here on the road. He's arguably the greatest defensive coordinator in college football history, but... Uh, it certainly would be a storybook ending if they can finish it the way they're talking about finishing it. From the 20-yard line, Tavion Robinson takes it to about the 39. Robinson. Second team players are in the game, as has Georgia Tech. Yates under pressure. Shows some escapability until he's brought down by Alan Tisdale. It's immediate pressure through the middle. Just a quick win to the middle of the field, and that, I'm not sure what was going on up front. Georgia Tech kind of turned. <laughs> Yates under pressure again, gets rid of it, and hits Malachi Carter, who makes a man miss, breaks a tackle, and will move the chains. That's as good of a play as Georgia Tech has had today. Foster's going to continue to come with pressure. Both linebackers coming. Good decision by Yates to get hit the shallow cross ground. Now Chapman make the tackle and you get off the field. But And that's the way this defense. And the run from Carter after the catch. And that is Georgia Tech's longest play of the day. And they'll lose a few on the next one. Christian Malloy brought down by Hollyfield. Has been all over the field today as a number of the second level defenders, but here he is just on a run through by the linebacker. He did in the past under Paul Johnson offensively. Triple option of the pro spread. And Alan Tisdale nearly had a pick six of his own. Fourth down try of the day. Yates to throw, pressure coming. He escapes and he comes very close to the first down marker. I thought he got it, but they spotted him maybe a half yard shy. But, you know, good for Yates and, and a heck of an effort by the young man to get the first down. So the Yellow Jackets keep it and welcome to college football, Jordan Yates. Wild now. Got a young quarterback and a young linebacker, and he's introduced himself a couple times to Yates. <laughs> and all of them are trying to get to the ball. Here's a deep shot down the sideline, and nothing doing. Now they're going to back out of it. They called off the blitz. It's going to come from the other side. Here it comes. Yates got away from the first man, but not another. And that's Virginia Tech's fourth sack of the game. Deshaun Crawford with his second of the year. Turnover on downs as Crawford, last year's ACC, uh, last week's ACC. We saw Jemias and Jalen interact on the field during a spot of a fourth down call earlier. This is Caleb Stewart. Ingle, the guilty of the five yard penalty, at least in the officials' eyes. And here's Stewart maintaining his balance down the sideline. He steps out of bounds, though. It'll be marked at the nine, first and goal, Virginia Tech. Freshman, Evan mentioned from Jacksonville, Florida, Ed White High School, had just under 1,000 yards rushing last year, nine touchdowns. On Georgia Tech, Quincy Patterson not going to make it to the end zone. It'll be fourth down as we play 
Under seven minutes to go in the fourth. Yates played pretty well, performed pretty well in there. Yates just had his helmet knocked off on that last play, so they give up the middle and a big first down they... run for Malloy. Ahead. Really good job up front by Georgia Tech. Good job in the second level. Throw two interceptions, one of which was returned by Farley for six. Goes to the air and fires Rams incomplete, intended for P.J. Harris. And Jordan Yates back in the game at quarterback. Yates fakes the pitch, shows the speed, and is just tripped up by the shoelaces there. Three and three quarters minutes remaining. Can Georgia Tech get points? Yates able to flip it right as he was getting dragged down. The clock winding down. They snap it before it expires. Yates looking for the tight end, Davis. That ball dislodged by Chapman. Jordan Yates in relief of James Graham. Zips it down the sideline, and it's incomplete. Potentially playoff-bound Clemson Tiger team who's taking, a, taking apart your Wake Forest Demon Deacons right now. And I'll say this. The Griffin brothers, they'll go head-to-head -head again next year, presumably. But Jalen Griffin and the Hokies win this battle in Atlanta 45 to nothing.